Artificial intelligence is all the rage in legal technology at the time I'm recording this. So I looked at ways in which we could harness the power of AI in document automation. I specifically wanted to use AI that was freely available and didn't require any technical know-how or change to the code. So I focused on using ChatGPT as a first draft tool. I wanted to use it to give me examples of plain language, to help me tailor my questions for pro se litigants, to potentially provide translations, and to give me straightforward definitions for legal terms. It can help flesh out an interview or give you a starting point if you're stuck during the drafting process. Sometimes the hardest part of creating the interview is just getting started. That's where I think AI can be a help. It can give you some content to start working with and get those creative juices flowing. The thing with document assembly, especially automated forms created for self-represented litigants, is that there is an art form to doing it well. It's not just automating the form with technology. It's breaking down the process into digestible chunks for people who are facing very complex, important legal issues in their lives. One of the keys to this art form is that you have to have the script or the storyboard or the plan, whatever you want to call it, in place before you jump into the software. That is going to allow you to create a document assembly package that flows seamlessly through the different sections of the interview, accurately captures all of the user's answers, and provides them with the content and legal knowledge that they'll need for the process. You can utilize AI to get started on your storyboard or script by copying the form into the AI prompt and asking it, what question should I ask to automate this form? The example form that I used was one I have altered for A to J author training exercises, but it's based off a real name change petition. It's in a PDF format on my computer, and I opened it in a tab alongside ChatGPT. I selected all the text in the PDF and copied it along with that, what questions would you ask to automate this form prompt? The results are on the right-hand side. It grouped the form into eight question sections. This looks a lot like the outline storyboard format that I talked about in video one of the section. I could easily take this and fill in the variables needed for these questions and have a solid first draft of my interview right here but I know I'm gonna need more to hit that art form level of document automation for self-represented litigants. So an interesting use I found for ChatGPT was to ask it to pretend to be a self-represented litigant trying to accomplish whatever my form was for. We've talked a couple of times in prior videos about those one to five user personas that you should create at the start of your automating process to inform your interview development. AI can help flesh them out a bit and come up with questions or problems that this user might have. So for example, I want to automate a child name change form in the land of A to J author. I asked the AI to tell me what questions they might have if they were a single mother trying to change their child's name. It came up with 10 questions or areas of discussion that a typical user in this scenario might have. I could then use this to build out my interview. I already know what variables I'll need to cover for my template building, but this gives me the context I'll need to provide like process overview and court procedures for how to actually file, and if they'll need to be in person. It helps to build out those learn mores that will explain legal procedures, timelines, and potential costs. For me, this would create a checklist of things that I'd like to make sure to address in my interview. I'd go through and do this for each of my user personas, even applying follow-up prompts if I wanted to get additional questions or problems that this type of user might have. Now that I've got my storyboard and the follow-up checklist, I want to give my plan text a plain language review. The AI can help with that too. I took that same list of questions that was produced from the copy and paste of the form into the prompt two slides ago, and I asked ChatGPT to make it more plain language. Particularly troublesome was the criminal history check section. That underwent the biggest changes, as you can see here. It stripped a lot of the legalese out of the text and rephrased the questions in a way that hits more of that fifth grade reading level. It still requires you or your subject matter expert to review it though. Because it stripped out all the clauses about probation in the questions like, have you ever been convicted of or placed on probation for X? You'd need a subject matter expert to tell you if that removal of the probation changes the question so substantially that someone may give a legally incorrect answer. If so, you can add that part of the question back in and perhaps define probation. Same thing for the removal of aggravated identity theft from the identity theft question. But you got a plain language review of your draft interview language in about 10 seconds using the AI. Let's assume our subject matter experts said that we do need to know if the identity theft was regular old identity theft 
or if it was aggravated identity theft. To elicit the correct response from the end user, I'm likely going to need to define the difference. Here's where AI can help you. I asked ChatGPT to provide me with a plain language definition of aggravated identity theft. That's the first definition here on the left. Words that are legally relevant likely need to be used in their formal usage, but they are ripe for pop-up definitions. Pop-up definitions are one of those just-in-time learning features that A to J Author has to provide that definition right at the point in which the end user needs to use it to make a decision or to answer a question. Two that popped up for me in this example were felony and misdemeanor. Again, these may need some jurisdiction-specific tweaking to make them perfect for your interview, but you've gotten a really good draft of two pop-ups in 10 seconds. The final AI area to talk about is in relation to translations. I've heard pros and cons for using AI to translate legal text. I'm not sold on using it wholesale without expert review. But just like everything else in this AI-related part, it seems to be able to give you a solid first draft. It all depends on whether you, as the author of this interview, have the subject matter expertise to evaluate the AI's draft. Just like with the plain language translations and the pop-up definitions, if you aren't a subject matter expert in this area of the law or in this form, you should get someone who is to review it for you. If you aren't a native speaker of the language you're asking the AI to translate into, you should get a native speaker or a translator to review it for you. But it does give you that jumping off point in 10 seconds. I've heard that it can be a huge cost saver to provide the text already in the target language to a translator and then ask them to review it rather than handing them the English version and asking them to translate it from scratch. Here's what ChatGPT produced when I asked it to translate into Spanish the plain language version of the questions it had generated from the form. That's the end of part three, AI first drafts. AI is a new frontier in the legal technology world, which can seem daunting, but I hope I've given you a couple concrete examples of ways that you can use current and free iterations of AI to enhance your document assembly projects. The next video in this section is going to dive deep into the question design editor and walk you through actually using it to create your interview pages.